Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Burnaby Hospital Redevelopment Phase 1 Project Community Open House. Um, we're thrilled that each of you have taken time uh, to join us this evening, and uh, we hope that this is informative and also we'll have a Q&A session to follow shortly after our presentation. I would like to respectively acknowledge that Burnaby Hospital and our community health services that we provide are situated on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the tsleil Squamish, and Musqueam nations. We would also like to honour and recognize the North Fraser Métis Charter Community, as well as the many diverse First Nations and Inuit families who call this territory home. I would also like to acknowledge that we do have a member from the Ministry of Health here joining us this evening, uh, Kirk Eden. So thank you very much for joining. And I would like to now introduce Brent Crucial, our Vice President, Strategic Capital Investments and Facilities to share a few words. Thanks, Leanne. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, welcome everyone this evening and just say a couple of words. Uh, I'm coming from the traditional territory today of the Kwantlen, Coquitlam, Keitsi, and Swasin nations in Surrey. Um, what an opportunity, what an exciting project uh, Burnaby Hospital redevelopment is. I, I want to just acknowledge these projects are incredibly difficult. They take years, and that's typically after years of planning. But they're vitally important to healthcare and healthcare delivery in the region, uh, Fraser Health and in the, of course, the Lower Mainland. But let's just acknowledge these projects are tough. They're they're noisy. They're they're dirty. They can create a lot of dust. They can create a lot of refuse around the construction site. They can create congestion. Construction trucks, vehicles, challenges with parking. Uh, a beehive of activity at what was once a you know a relatively quiet residential area but they're vitally important to ensure that the quality of facilities matches the high standard and quality of care being provided by our staff and medical staff at Burnaby Hospital they're vitally important and with that I just want to say Thanks, thanks to the project team members who are joining us today and are, are taking time this evening to provide this update. Thanks to uh, the public for tuning in uh, to ask questions and to hear an update on the project and for your patience uh, as we progress this multi-year redevelopment. Um, it's worth it. It's worth it. What we're working on here is a world-class facility and uh, it's gonna be beautiful. Uh, but it does take time. And so I just want to thank everyone and uh, and I'll stop there and I'll turn it over to the experts. Thanks. Thank you, Brent, for those encouraging words and uh, very inspiring. It does take a, a big team and we're very thankful for the community um, for all their support. I'm Leanne Appleton, the Executive Director at Burnaby Hospital and our Community Health Services, and I'd like to introduce our panelists this evening. Noor Esmail is our Chief Project Officer and Executive Director for the Burnaby Hospital Redevelopment Project. Dr. Ish Ahmed is our Site Medical Director at Burnaby Hospital. Dr. Brian McGowan is our Physician Lead for the Burnaby Hospital Redevelopment. And we have our partner, Danielle Sleeman here, who's the Vice President of Development at Burnaby Hospital Foundation. So our agenda this evening, we will go over a project overview. We'll hit some key highlights. We'll have an update as it relates to our construction progress, but also the upcoming construction. We'll have an update from Danielle on the Burnaby Hospital Foundation and just some tips on how to stay informed. The most important part for this evening is to hear from each of you. 
And so we will have a Q&A session and there is a Slido code. So please, as you're listening, go ahead to slido.com and use the code as you see here, all in capitals, COH-BHRP. And over to you, Nora. Thank you so much, Leanne. Um, we'll start with the overview. Uh, as uh, Brent mentioned, the Burnaby Hospital Redevelopment Project will transform the hospital into a modernized medical and surgical healthcare campus. Phase one includes the new six-story Keith and Betty BD Pavilion with 83 beds. The majority of the rooms uh, will be single patient. And as you can see from the uh, inset, uh, large windows to allow plenty of natural light and views so patients can receive the care they need with greater privacy and comfort. The facility will include a mental health and substance use unit with a secured outdoor patio to enhance healing. A maternity unit providing single room care where labor, delivery and recovery will all take place in the same comfortable room. A neonatal intensive care unit with single rooms to support best practices for infection control for our littlest patients and a medical unit with outbreak control zones to protect our patients and staff. The new Jim Patterson Surgery Center and renovations to existing buildings will facilitate bigger operating rooms equipped with new technology that will enhance the care we deliver to our patients. Additional pre and post operative recovery spaces to enhance patient experience and privacy. A larger Burnaby Community Emergency Department to reduce wait times a new medical device reprocessing department to further improve infection control, and a new energy center to increase electrical capacity to support the hospital's growth. Phase one is underway and construction is expected to be completed by 2026. Phase two will add a new inpatient tower with about 160 beds, a new BC Cancer Center, new med medical imaging department, expanded emergency department, and of course, more parking. Phase two business plan has been submitted to government and we hope for an approval to proceed with this in, in the spring. Tonight's presentation will focus on phase one. So some key highlights of the past year. At the beginning of 2022, we said goodbye to the Cascade building, which paved the way for redevelopment to begin and made the room for additional parking, phase one construction staging, and the proposed phase, future phase two patient tower in BC Cancer Centre. This is an older image as it was being demolished and another key highlight was obviously the groundbreaking event that we had in May 2020. We celebrated the start of the construction on phase one with former Premier Horgan, Health Minister Dix, uh, community leaders, as well as our uh, from our host nations, as well as our own leadership at the at Fraser. Another key highlight was the first crane on site in July 2022. Uh, this was at the Jim Patterson Surgery Center. And just a couple of weeks ago, you can see the inset in which a second crane was installed on site as well. Over to, I believe, uh, Dr. Brian. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm at a slight disadvantage in that my slides aren't showing, but this slide should be showing a mock-up. Um, we had a, a really uh, wonderful uh, opportunity last summer uh, where a lot of staff were able to get together and come and see actual spaces mocked up to reflect um, how we would see our new uh, environment. This is a mock-up of an OR. Um, the staff who participated were able to walk around, see how things would fit, and actually envision the spaces using virtual reality. Um, the next slide, if we could show it, actually show some of the staff there. 
and um, uh, they had lots of um, feedback. They performed scenarios actually, just like a patient was there in their uh, care. As you see the drawings on the wall, feedback was constant. Uh, we received many important updates to um, how we would be able to build these spaces. They were ER spaces, patient rooms, the ORs, over 150 uh, medical uh, and hospital staff participated along with patient advisors. And um, we received very good feedback about everything from the where a door should be located to how the um, patient's um, family could access them while they're in hospital. Um, as I mentioned, uh, patient advisors were involved. We had 12 patient and family advisors who were actively involved, and they actually also provided us um, great uh, insight into not only the patient rooms, but wayfinding, interior design, and the public spaces such as the parking, the lobby, registration, the retail food and waiting areas. So it was a very successful partnership between our team, the um, development partners and um, the staff. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Bright. Uh, back to highlights. Uh, in, uh, in February or just two weeks ago, we actually completed the modular building construction. That's an interim home for our, our administration team. Uh, this is to enable renovations and upgrades to take place in the existing facility. They're all moved in there now. And for construction progress, the Jim Patterson Surgery Center you see in the image is up to the sixth level on one side of the building and uh, level or second level on the other side. Concrete has been poured and you can see the structural frame above on the upper floors uh, going ahead. And on the other side with the BD Pavilion, we're deep into the ground. This image is a little older. That crane is completely erected now and uh, the concrete pouring should be coming uh, very shortly for the foundation. It's four levels into the ground for the parking. You can see that little person in uh, relation. Oh, sorry, Wendy. <laughs> so we can go to the next one. And then a, a big scope of work uh, is actually what you're seeing here is a site plan of the entire site and uh, uh, circumventing the whole site is this ring. Uh, this uh, it's what we call the campus perimeter um, a pathway to install fiber and copper cabling. Uh, this will allow for telecommunication services for the entire hospital. And it's literally a trench that's being dug around the site and will install the uh, cabling. This will take uh, almost two years to do uh, in sections. It'll, it'll start uh, in mid-March. And uh, of course, as we traverse some uh, entryways, we will be uh, impacting entrances and uh, parking lots, but we'll mitigate all of that in advance for our staff, our medical staff and visitors. And then uh, over to Danielle. Perfect, thank you, Noor. Um, so if you see here on the first slide, and, and if you look back at old pictures of the hospital, um, you'll see that the exterior of the building hasn't changed much since it was built in the 50s. And we do know that Burnaby Hospital has a very proud history um, the community came together to build our hospital almost 70 years ago, and we're asking the community and our Burnaby Hospital family staff to come together again to transform our campus of care. And Nora and Dr. McGowan have kind of done a really great job of walking you through what that's going to look like. Um, but where the foundation comes into all of this is there's not a single hospital in BC that's fully government to government funded. And so our role as the fundraising organization at the hospital is to bridge the gap between what the government funds 
and what our community needs. And so the best way that I could describe this is if you think of two car models, the government provides a base model, um, but the community wants something more. They want bells and whistles and something that's shinier and faster. And that's kind of where we come in and help through our donors fund um, the cost of newly purchased medical equipment and upgrades for the hospital. Next slide, please. Thank you. And so there's a lot of text on this slide and I won't go through it all, but our hospital serves a population of half a million people and delivers a huge range of medical services to more than 200,000 patients each year. And we know that there is an absolute urgent need to grow from um, being stretched to capacity to the new threats that were proposed by the pandemic, which we understood how to work through. Um, we haven't been renovated significantly since the 70s. We have an older and aging demographic that healthcare services will increase with this age group as they continue to age. And we want to provide an opportunity for our medical staff to foster innovation and so that you community members can continue to be provided with care close to home. Next. And so all that to be said, we have absolutely come a long way and together alongside with our community members like you, we've recently achieved a great milestone by raising $30 million for the redevelopment um, that supports the first phase of this project. Um, but this is just a step in the larger campaign for redeveloping the entire campus. And we still need community support to help ensure that we can have a state-of-the-art facility that will meet the growing healthcare needs, not only for our community now, but for generations to come. And just on this last next slide, um, I wanted to close by sharing a story from a family whose baby recently received care here at the hospital. It's a story of baby Aiden, who I'm happy to say is a Burnaby Hospital NICU graduate and his parents. Um, Aiden was welcomed into the world about two months before his expected due date. And although he was not born at our hospital, he did spend a week at another hospital before being healthy enough to be transferred to the NICU at Burnaby Hospital. And before his transfer, his parents pictured here had some concerns about how the, this hospital would compare to the hospital where their son was born in terms of resources. But the family's reservations were quickly dissipated after just one day in our NICU. They were so appreciative of the level of care that was provided by Aiden's specific NICU team and how their child's physical and emotional needs were prioritized in order for him to grow healthier each day. And they really, through seeing this, encouraged everyone in the community to get involved and to support the redevelopment of the hospital, as they believe that if the NICU can accomplish so much with some of the limitations that they have now that they can't imagine how much more the NICU and other departments will be able to do with additional resources, space, and upgraded equipment once the entire campus of care is completed. And so I'm happy to report that thanks to the exceptional NICU team at Burnaby Hospital and of course first time determined parents, Aiden has continued to mature and thrive and will soon be celebrating his first birthday. And that's just one of the many great stories that we get to hear and share with our medical staff um, as being a part of this community and this hospital. Thank you. Thanks, Danielle. Um, so a big shout out and thank you to everyone in our Burnaby community, this neighborhood, and certainly our community partners. Uh, as Brent was mentioning at the beginning, um, there has been a lot of noise and disruption on Kincaid and other streets, and so some of you have experienced that noise and additional traffic and congestion. We are certainly committed to providing you uh, frequent updates and also encourage you to use um, some of these sites to keep yourself and your families well informed. You can see the website there, uh, which you can um, receive regular updates. Also, you can subscribe to 
um, another site as well. And the most important thing is, you know, it's really important that we keep our channels open and hear from each of you. And so if you have any feedback, any suggestions or questions or comments, please um, email bhredevelopment at fraserhealth.ca. And just before we go to the most important part of this open house, uh, we do want to share uh, a short video clip of our staff, a medical staff and project team in action during those mock-ups uh, last summer. Wonderful. Thanks, Leanne. So while I tee that video up, I um, just want you guys to take a moment of just um, marking down that code, um, slido.com, and that's where we'll be taking your questions. redevelopment project is a massive undertaking. There is an incredible amount of work being put into motion to transform the hospital into a modernized medical and surgical healthcare campus. This is why we're here doing reviews of model room designs or mock-ups as they're called. As you can see around me, we are testing out life-size constructed and virtual models built by cardboard. These models are constructed to scale. And for us to successfully complete a project this big, details like placement of equipment, door locations, and proximity to other rooms and services are important factors in ensuring sure they face an optimal location care. It's pretty exciting. I mean, when you're seeing on paper, you're never really sure how much space is there going to be. Is it really what you imagine? So this is a pretty exciting thing to see today. Well, it's really helpful because even though the designers and the architects and everybody have a sense of how they think things should be, at the end of the day, the clinical staff are the ones who are going to have to use the space um, to best care for our patients. So being able to make those moves and switches is really helpful for the frontline staff. By providing feedback at the stage, we can make sure the design actually meets our needs and save on unnecessary costs of having to make changes later when the hospital is already in its build phase. We're really looking forward to building an incredible hospital for our community, staff, and physicians. Excellent, Wendy. Thank you. All right. Thank you for bearing with me while I transition screens here. So um, again, just invite everyone to go to slido.com and the code is right over there, COH-BHRP. Um, and we'll start off with some of our questions. Um, so the first one is, where will the cell phone tower be situated in the new hospital? My concern is this tower's massive look and proximity causing a possible health effects. Your? Yeah, thank you, great question. So simple answer, no, no cell ta phone tower. Uh, we will actually just have carrier antennas on the rooftop, which is no different from the current situation. Uh, cell phone uh, antennas are regulated by the CRTC and uh, have been assessed for all health impacts. So no cell phone tower. Wonderful, thanks, Nir. Um, The next one is how will you be managing the light from the building so that it does not cause a disturbance to the neighbors, both in the front and rear of the building? 
Uh, another great question. I assume we're talking about the lights uh, from uh, the windows. Uh, uh, not a lot of exterior lights otherwise, apart from the parking. And uh, as we know that uh, uh, windows will have uh, the po proper covers like shades and blinds, as well as uh, expectations that uh, our patients are, aren't, um, don't have the lights on uh, at night, uh, usually uh, are also asleep like the rest of us. What measures have been taken to ensure the rear of the hospital does not contribute or succumb to erosion? Yeah, I love these questions. Uh, in fact, our, our buildings and our facilities uh, are four-sided. So all of the areas uh, will be designed, planned for, and ensure that we treat, treat them equally. So that there, although we can have the front accesses, even our back of house, are being planned and improved to ensure that we uh, meet the highest standards. I think this too might refer to the riparian zone. If it does refer to the riparian zone, uh, we actually undergo a full uh, um, assessment through the uh, Ministry of Environment and the City of Burnaby. Uh, we will not be impacting uh, the riparian zone. Um, and uh, we expect uh, the that area, including the uh, whole green uh, space that we have on the east side to remain as it is. And thanks, Nora. And uh, the next question mm -hmm. is funding. Ministry and Foundation provided funding combined. What is the total cost of the redevelopment? Yeah, um, another great question. So our total project budget between phase one and uh, phase two is uh, approximately 1.3 billion. Um, and that's still undergoing uh, uh, adjustment. Um, and uh, we will have a tally uh, when phase two is approved to know where the uh, final mark will be. Is the redevelopment designed to incorporate a central surgical facility or will there be a second separate daycare surgical center? I, I can I, I, ask or, that. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Dr. McGowan. Yeah, sure. Um, the uh, wonderful donation from Jimmy Pattison has uh, allowed us to put his name on what is going to be known as the Jimmy Pattison Surgical Center, I believe. So. Um, as part of our work, in addition to phase two, we've been looking diligently at the um, update of our operating rooms. And um, so far, our plans have led us to uh, believe that we will have 10 state-of-the-art operating rooms and four outpatient procedure rooms, which would be utilized for daycare procedures. So we're looking forward again, and Nor could probably comment more about uh, approval process and moving forward with that. Yeah, no, you've got it right. It's one integrated area. Um, here's a question about timelines. Can you review the timelines again for the completion of the different phases of the hospital? Right, so uh, phase one is anticipated to be completed uh, for the new build in uh, 2025 and renovations by 2026. And uh, for the phase two, we're still going through that. Expected completion will be um, later in the timeline. Uh, once we have approval, we'll know exactly when the construction will get completed. And out of 1.3 billion, how much is the construction cost in this phase? Uh, the construction cost, uh, I assume we mean, uh, I'm not sure if we mean the project cost, uh, but uh, it's about 600 million for total phase one project cost. And not all of that is construction costs. There are soft costs associated with that equipment and everything else. Great questions. Um, please do, yeah, keep them coming.
While we're waiting for questions, just about the crane. So I think we have one of the largest few cranes in the province uh, on the site right now. Uh, the first one that came on the site is, uh, I think, this one of the six largest in the entire province. Fun fact. All right, here's a question. What can we do as neighbors to help make this process easier for you guys? That's a good uh, that's the be best question <laughs> yeah, so far. That is, that is yeah. the best question. I'd like to put a star next to that one. Well, what I, I think each of us might answer this differently from a construction point of view. I'll just ask for patience, understanding, and feedback. Uh, like uh, Brent said at the outset, uh, it does. Uh, it we do create a mess, but in the end, it's it's well worth it. Uh, what we just asked for is uh, patience, uh, uh, understanding, and whenever we do, I could do something better, uh, just let us know and we will try to act on it. Uh, Leanne, did you want to uh, add to that from a operations point of view? Yeah, thank you, Noor. I, I would say right now, um, if any of you are accessing our health services, uh, thank yous go a long way to our hardworking staff and medical staff. Um, so that would be one um, actionable thing that I would appreciate on behalf of the team here. Yeah, and I'd like to add that um, as neighbours, uh, eventually, you'll be a neighbor of one of the preeminent facilities for healthcare in the province. And um, we're very proud of this long overdue um, redevelopment of that site. And um, we're all being inconvenienced to a certain extent, both inside and outside of the facility. But the end result will be something that we'll all be proud of as um, British Columbians. Um, a parking has always been an issue at this hospital. What are the plans to mitigate parking on side streets? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, as uh, again, Brent said, we will impact parking, uh, but uh, we will be adding additional parking to the site, as we saw from the images. Uh, we're four levels into the ground uh, with a lot more parking to come. Uh, in the meantime, we have impacted some of uh, the access to the existing. Uh, but I'm uh, pleased to say that we'll be adding about 75 stalls uh, very shortly with the uh, uh, Cascade facility having been demolished. We're using that as a temporary parking area for uh, the facility. So we hope that we can mitigate this, but that's always an issue. And alternative means of transport is probably the best suggestion about how to circumvent these par parking challenges that we face. Um, are there any interesting sustainable features included in the construction? Oh, our, um, our facility is trying to be as innovative as it can. Uh, I don't have all the facts available right now, but if you would write to us about this, I'm happy to actually provide some details uh, or we, so that we can respond to the anonymous who did pose that question. And perhaps when we next meet, we'll provide an update on some uh, features that can be shared with you. Okay. Thank um, you so much. What is the plan? for the receiving area, so the loading dock. Right, so um, that is the back of house that I talked about before. Currently, there isn't uh, a significant expansion expected there. Uh, phase two, we'll see uh, uh, some expansion occurring to the receiving area, but we are looking at the entire space, including uh, the current Elmwood access, uh, how we can actually uh, find an alternate way of accessing the back of house, working with the city of Burnaby uh, to try to um, mitigate some of the impact on our neighbors along Elmwood. We're very concerned about this as well, and we're working on a plan, and hopefully we can share that with our neighbors uh, very soon. Um, it does need a partnership with uh, the city and uh, we're hoping to achieve something soon. Um, 
this is specific on Elmwood. So we live on mm. Elmwood, very concerned about the truck and car traffic. Um, can you give us an overview of the traffic flow with the new parking on the north side? Yeah, so just to reconfirm, no construction traffic uh, should be undertaken on Elmwood. We continue to uh, enforce that or try to enforce it. If you see a breach, please do let us know. We will act on it right away. Uh, the uh, truck traffic of deliveries hasn't changed, uh, but as I said just moments ago, we are looking at that. And uh, we hope to have a plan with you soon if we can work with the city of Burnaby on this. Will there be any changes in the roads in the neighborhood to accommodate access to the hospital, to the new hospital? No changes in terms of traffic uh, right now. We do have some temporary uh, changes like the uh, no left turn when you exit uh, the parking lot along uh, Kincaid, uh, but there is a with phase. Uh, we've also realigned our emerge access. Uh, it used to be a curvy one. It's now uh, rectilinear, so we make a right hand turn uh, or left hand coming down, and that's straightened out. Uh, but no other uh, traffic or uh, roads changes, as it were. But we're not changing roads. There will be, I think, a new orientation to the site when we have uh, phase two uh, proceeding and uh, perhaps sunset will become uh, um, more dominant access point, which is a more commercial street and probably the more appropriate access to the site because the phase two will be facing uh, sunset and that might uh, reduce or mitigate some of the concerns about the neighborhood access. A sunset, if we can just go back in history to the original hospital uh, that was built in the 50s and what we saw through the images, especially with Danielle's foundation uh, image, but that was the main access point and arrival to the hospital at the top of the hill. So you came down this long avenue and that's why it's so much wider with commercial um, facilities. And so perhaps we'll revert to that in the future and uh, there'll be less traffic along the secondary access and roadways. Um, and will the building receive any LEED certification points? Absolutely, absolutely. Great question. Uh, LEED Gold, uh, so anyone who does know about LEED, and that is a, a prerequisite of the Ministry of Health that all of our new facilities that uh, both uh, the government and foundation and all the donors contribute to meet the highest requirements in terms of certification and in this case uh, gold standard and this is uh, just to be clear uh, this is not about the finishes this is about energy conservation about meeting uh, sustainability to the earlier question so this is a uh, meeting uh, sustainability in terms of a certification, not the finishes on the wall or the floors or the type of, of faucets we have. Uh, another fun fact, we poured uh, recently the foundation when we had finished uh, all the excavation of the Jim Patterson facility in one Saturday. I think we had uh, um, over 100 concrete truck deliveries happen from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and they poured the whole foundation in uh, one go. So that was a pretty amazing achievement. All right, we got another question here. Are there plans for the commercial area on Sunset? So that's outside the purview of the hospital or the Fraser Health, uh, but I would assume with the city there would be a uh, area development plan, and I'm sure that they're going to be looking at uh, Sunset Avenue and uh, the rest of the facilities around the neighborhood.
Should I go back to my list of fun facts? Yes. <laughs> oh, here we go. No, I <laughs> How far along are you in terms of interior design de development? And will renders be available online to see to see online? Well, this is, these are great questions. Yeah. I'm, I'm so impressed about the level of knowledge and uh, information here. Uh, so we're 90% along in the design development of all of the facility, including the interior design, our wayfinding signage. Um, we haven't considered um, uh, providing uh, renderings online yet, uh, but uh, that's a great uh, suggestion and we'll take that away and uh, either implement it or let you know. All of our approaches to interior design are for um, ease of access, uh, user-friendly, uh, and uh, reflect the, the multi multicultural uh, neighbors and uh, users of our site. So they are extremely, um, uh, I, I, I'd say, appropriate for healthcare and uh, the intent to remain um, uh, current for a long time. Nothing that's going to be just uh, for the moment. And of course, we do take into, fa in, uh, to, into account all the requirements for gender-based analysis, uh, indigenous uh, input is received for our interior design, as well as, uh, as Dr. Brian was uh, mentioning, we, we do have uh, uh, family uh, groups that are part of our review processes. So the gym panel, oh, just in time. You're never going to get your next fact out here. All right. Okay. What other amenities will be available on site, like food, retail, coffee? Uh, well, yeah, I can certainly, yeah, sure, I can take this one. So uh, there will be a cafeteria in phase one and um, also an area for you to get an espresso or any other kind of coffee that you like. Um, we won't have any retail per se, but we will have a small gift shop where uh, visitors could purchase small items. Um, but that is something that is near and dear to us at this hospital. So that will um, have a new space, a new refreshed space. And there'll be plenty of, um, I would say, seating in um, throughout the campus, both inside and outdoors uh, for uh, patients and families uh, during the spring and summer and into the fall uh, as well. Uh, I think Danielle had a hard stop from the foundation at uh, 5.45, so just wanted to thank you for the uh, participation. And uh, if there are any questions for the foundation uh, just before you leave, uh, happy to receive those. I think the Brent is also uh, leaving us, and thank you, Brent, for making the time to come and join us for this very important information at uh, Open House. Well, maybe we'll just give another minute or two for any last burning questions. Um, we won't keep you any longer than you need to. I'm sure everyone is busy um, having dinner soon. So, Anora, why don't you throw out us one more fun fact that you've got in your pocket there? Well, I just want to provide uh, some uh, information that would be really, I think, helpful to our, especially our neighbours to the north. Uh, our current plant is located, so this is our energy plant or power area, is located uh, on the north side of the site. That will be moving to the top of the uh, Jim Patterson building so that it's no longer uh, either a visual or a auditory um, impact to anyone. It's will be on the seventh floor and uh, well away from our neighbors. So I think 
that should be it. And we've provided our, our contact information. I don't know how quickly you can put that back up, but uh, on behalf of the project team, uh, really been great to uh, provide this information uh, and uh, uh, welcome your question and interest. And uh, um, many of you could help uh, come on board uh, and help build this facility. You're very well informed um, and uh, happy to have you participate uh, in these sessions in the future. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you to all of our presenters and our panelists, um, as well as just to our community. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Wendy. Great job. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Good night.